Hello viewers, welcome to Ekam IAS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about earthquake that happened today itself in Taiwan. So it has been the strongest earthquake in the last 25 years in the history of Taiwan. So almost a magnitude of 7.2 to 7.4 according to different reports, the magnitude has been differing. So at least about 7.2 earthquake, okay, you can say 7.2 magnitude earthquake has quagged the coast of Taiwan. So, in this context, it is very much important because not only in the uh, uh, context of earthquake or tsunami warnings, but also because this year Taiwan's elections happened. And also, if you have seen Taiwan-China tensions also are surfacing around the world. At the same time, sometimes it is also important to know what is India's stand with respect to Taiwan. So, in this context of Taiwan's earthquake, we will be discussing about all the aspects which you need to know from Taiwan's uh, perspective in the UPSC journey. Okay. So, without any further delay let's start so you know today itself morning it is according to 8 am ist you can see indian standard time so a powerful earthquake of almost 7.2 magnitude it has hurt it has hit the eastern coast of taiwan you can see this is the area taichung okay so but before that we just need to know what is the location geographical location of taiwan so how it uh, like what is the status of this taiwan and all we'll be knowing so if you see here Okay, here we have Tropic of Cancer which is passing through Taiwan. This is the most important aspect which you need to understand. Okay, so whenever there are some areas of tension or some areas of conflict or because of various reasons, if one particular area is always in the news, then UPSC has this tendency of asking questions from that either in the places in news or based on geographical locations. So first we need to know what is the not location of Taiwan. Okay, so if you see the northern side, we have East China Sea okay east china sea is to the northern side in the eastern side we have philippine sea in the southern side we have luzon strait luzon strait and on the western side we have formosa strait i'll explain what are these straits just wait till then so here these are the geographical boundaries of taiwan and you know taiwan is an island country which is almost 160 kilometers far away from the mainland China and you know this is an island country okay so what is the main contention here because China claims that Taiwan is integral part of China and Taiwan always asserts that they want they are independent state okay so this is what the contention between China and Taiwan will know what is the stand of US and also what is the stand of India with respect to Taiwan so we'll, we'll look into these aspects as well so what you have to keep in mind is here you have Taiwan Strait, which is most important thing. Okay, you know what is the strait? Strait is an narrow water body which connects two major water bodies, right? So here two major water bodies that are getting connected with this Taiwan Strait, or you have South China Sea here and East China Sea on the other side. Okay, so that is getting connected with Taiwan Strait, also called Formosa Strait. This is F. Okay, Formosa straight okay taiwan's earlier name was formosa okay so according to dutch they used to call it as formosa in 16th or 14th century times so formosa Strait or taiwan Strait separates the south china sea with east china sea and do remember in this uh, area of uh, east china sea area we have different island countries like japan we have south korea we have taiwan we have we have philippines if you see Interestingly, all these countries are an ally of US, so which are closer to China. So that means always US wants to, like you can, you know what is the difference, right? US wants to control and it wants to increase its presence in the nearby areas of China. So in this way, it has very close allies of US in the China's neighborhood. Okay, so this is what the main thing you have to keep in mind. Then here you have on the other side we have this Luzon Strait. So what is what is this Luzon Strait? Luzon Strait is separating South China Sea with Philippine Sea. So these are the two straits which are very important in context of Taiwan. You need to know from prelims perspective. They can ask these type of questions. Then what is the main thing you need to know understand in this video is here why Taiwan was hit by an earthquake okay so if you see Taiwan on the eastern coast okay so eastern coast was hit today by earthquake no followed by tsunami alert also was issued so here you need to know why this eastern coast because it is bounded on the eastern side with pacific ocean so now you know what happens in the pacific ocean so here we have a term or important thing which if you have studied geography you might have come across this pacific ring of fire so what is a specific ring of fire these are nothing but a line of seismic bells 
where majority of the earthquakes can happen. What is this specific ring of fire? So where more majority of the earths, like you can say 70 to 80 percent of earthquakes and volcanoes across the world happen in this area itself. Why? Because this is a convergent plate boundary. Okay, convergent plate boundary. So what is convergent plate boundary? Convergent means when two or more okay lithospheric plates they collide with each other or they converge with each other what happens because of this denser plate will subduct because of that what happens because of that some portion of the crust may damage in from that uh, eruptions okay the energy can be released in the form of earthquake or sometimes volcanism also happens so as this is in the area of pacific ring of fire the taiwan is in the area of pacific ring of fire it is always vulnerable to earthquakes and tsunamis and you know in these countries like japan the philippines pines or be it Taiwan in these countries as they are in the Pacific Ocean region and their island countries they are always well prepared and they have been a very good robust disaster response strong and resilient disaster response and even their houses are also built in a way that they are earthquake resistant structures so in this way they have whatever the measures they are taking okay so that is always they wanted to take mitigation measures so that the root cause of the problem okay earthquake those things you cannot stop but in case if these earthquakes happen then there have having very good disaster response or adoptive measures so that they can minimize the damage. So previously Taiwan was hit by most powerful earthquake in 1999 in September, almost 4000 plus people died. So according to the report so far only 10 persons okay so roughly it went to 10 now and most of the people got injured so we will know how many people but what is the main thing you need to remember here is. UPSC, if you see, like uh, in 2023, we have a major earthquake that happened in Syria and Turkey region where more than 45,000 people died. So when it is a major earthquake, UPSC have asked that year in 2023 itself about P and S waves. So why did they ask a question in geography is because the powerful earthquake has been in use for a longer time because of the magnitude that has occurred in the Syria and Turkey region, Turkey region you can say. So whenever something happens in a large scale or if it is being in use very long time, okay, in those situations you can see the UPSC can frame a questions in geography context from that particular topic, okay. It is linked with current affairs. That is why you always have to link static with current affairs. At the same time, if you have remember some major earthquakes also happened in the history. If you have to see in 2003 Iran earthquake we have, then in 2004 we have Indonesia tsunami also, right? Nine magnitude tsunami has hit Indonesia and that's impact also there in Indian coast also. Sri Lanka, all these countries also suffered. Then we have in Haiti also in, nine, in 2006 and 2007, we have a major earthquake. If you have remembered in Haiti only we have this operation Indravati launched okay to rescue those persons who are stuck in that Haiti country okay so Central American country then we have in 2015 we have a Nepal earthquake which again in which we have launched Operation Maitri to extend our cooperation with Nepal okay in this way so there are so many earthquakes that happened in the recent past with magnitude of 7 and more okay 7 and above so whenever the magnitude is there 7 and above it can result in tsunami also so most of the time tsunami alert will be issued now tsunami alert was also issued to southern coast of China as well as southeast coast of Japan also because of its geographical proximity with Taiwan so We'll be looking into what are the points of discussion here, why it is in news, we'll be looking in, we'll be knowing the brief things about how earthquake happens and what happens during its generation, what factors contribute to an earthquake. Then we'll know what is the geographical vulnerability of Taiwan, why Taiwan is so susceptible to these earthquakes and all. Then we'll know about tsunami and what are the factors that create tsunamis. Then we'll also know what is China-Taiwan relations. We'll also understand what is the difference between one China principle and one China policy then Taiwan India relations what is the stand of India with respect to Taiwan so these are the aspects which we'll be discussing now so this forms part of GS one paper one under world's physical geography at the same time earthquakes topic also it is covering so next why it is in news today itself okay so a 7.5 magnitude earthquake has hit the coast of Taiwan triggering the tsunami waves also so in this context we need to know what is an earthquake so earthquake means you know it is just a shaking of the earth shaking of the earth. So what causes this shaking? Deformation of the crust. 
okay deformation of the crust this may happen because of number of reasons so most importantly in the case of taiwan it happened because of convergent plate boundaries when two plates converge with each other the crust may deform because of which there may be shaking of the earth in the shaking of the earth what happens there will be release of energy release of energy in the form of certain waves like we have again body waves and surface waves okay so you know under body waves we have p waves s waves you know p waves are the primary waves which will be coming to the like uh, which will be coming in the earthquake region for the first okay so they are called as primary waves and you know they will be traveling through solid liquid and gaseous medium but these if you know only through solid medium so surface s waves you can see only through solid and they have a wider shadow zone compared to the p wave so these are the aspects which you know after p wave we can feel this s wave then what happen in surface waves again you have l waves love waves or rayleigh waves we call so like this we have different waves surface waves because of the proximity to the surface what happens that most dangerous compared to the p waves so they have destruction capacity more so then what is another term you need to remember inside the crust okay so if you see where this majority of the natural earthquakes happen is in the lithosphere so what is lithosphere what is lithosphere the crust and the upper mantle together we call as the lithosphere so all the natural earthquakes will source from the lithosphere itself and you know the point where the release of energy happened that inside the crust we call as focus or hypocenter and straight above this point on the surface we call it as epicenter so these are the two things which you have to keep in mind okay so in this way earthquake need not be always natural sometimes dam or reservoir induced earthquakes will be there so because of mining it can happen different reasons can be triggering the earthquakes landslides also like this any other natural factors or artificial sometimes also collapse of any structure also may trigger earthquake so this is what you have to keep in mind then if you see this is what i have referred as specific ring of fire okay so this is extent of area where most of the plates okay so on the other side you have pacific plate which is a major plate and these plates like north american plate you have eurasian plate on this side so you have these plates okay so here south american plate and these plates they are converging at this area so which is making it more vulnerable to earthquakes and tsunamis so it is specific ring of fire specific ring of fire so if you see where is the in this circum pacific belt we call so here is the taiwan uh, approximately i'm saying so here is the taiwan here we have is japan so like this as they're closer to the pacific ring of fire almost every time they may be hit by these earthquakes and tsunamis so they're well prepared in that context and if you have remembered in 2011 we have a major tsunami triggered uh, like earthquake triggered tsunami also which caused this fukushima nuclear disaster in japan in 2011 so that is also what you have to keep in mind so this is what you have to keep in mind then this is the second most important area where most of the earthquakes can happen that is mid atlantic ridge this is a divergent plate boundary then we have this alpen himalayan belt this is the third most important area where majority of the earthquakes happen after the circum pacific belt okay so in this way you have to know then in india in case if there is an earthquake who is the main body who is joining the earthquakes in india is what is a body interested with zoning of earthquakes in india try to answer in the comment section and you can see here 59% of indian land area susceptible to earthquakes you can see we have zonation from zone 5 4 3 and 2 there is no zone 1 okay so very high risk area you can see these areas red spotted jammu and kashmir some areas you have delhi in the nearby areas himachal pradesh uttarakhand you have then these areas okay so then you have bihar then all the northeastern india and along with the kutch region of gujarat these are all in the zone 5 region very high risk then you have northern plains in the zone 4 uh, region and you have the central india in the moderate risk region you can see at the same time zone 2 andhra pradesh and telangana they have been in the zone 2 so what is the nodal body try to answer in the comment section then in case of uh, taiwan so what you have to know as i told you what is making taiwan so vulnerable is because of the location in the pacific ring of fire so which is at the convergent plate boundaries at the same time convergent plate boundaries okay so this is main reason why it is more prone to such large magnitude earthquakes and another important thing you have to keep in mind is with respect to magnitude you will be using a scale called richter scale okay richter scale in terms of intensity 
we will measure intensity of the earthquake intensity means what here the energy what how much is released is measured in magnitude intensity means how much is the damage that you will be measuring in mercury scale okay so these can also be asked so these are the things which you have to keep in mind then what is a tsunami tsunami is nothing but it is a giant oceanic wave which can be triggered by an earthquake or volcano which happens under the sea so under sea in case okay within the sea floor if there is an earthquake or if there is a volcano because of this eruption what happens is there is large scale displacement of water in that giant oceanic wave okay giant oceanic wave we call it as tsunami okay so tsunamis will have normally high frequency or will be there so they will be having uh, they will be having more destruction capacity because of the area they cover and also from where they have occurred for example if it happened in the deep ocean floor then as it reaches the coast in its intensity normally decreases but if it happens in the shallow waters okay then it will have very high intensity and to cause the damage so what factors are behind the earthquake or uh, tsunami creation or underwater earthquakes can be the reason underwater volcano i told you explosions means lava explosions also you can see volcanic eruptions underwater landslides if they happen at the same time any meteorite or asteroid if they impact also then these things can trigger a tsunami so then what you have to remember in china taiwan relations is always china is claiming that taiwan is integral or inalienable part of china itself but taiwan what it is saying taiwan is saying we are always an independent state okay so here you have to remember china is considered as people's republic of china taiwan is considered as republic of china they have the capital called taipei so what happens is so here china wants to assert its sovereignty over taiwan okay so they said that taiwan's legitimate government is ruling from beijing itself but taiwan is not ready to accept and it wants its sovereignty and only if you have remembered only 15 small island countries only have recognized taiwan as a country officially so no other major country even us also so what us is saying so us is adhering to one china policy there is a difference here one china principle is different and one china policy is different so us is saying we are adhering to this or we are uh, standing by this one china policy till what conditions when they'll adhere to these norms or policies is only when you china will not try to invade into taiwan and it will not try to forcibly convert taiwan into their land till then we'll be adhering otherwise we don't follow so us is maintaining diplomatic relations with taiwan it is selling off its weapons also to taiwan taipei and if you have remembered in the recent past only in one two years ago so us speaker nancy powell she visited taiwan said that time china has raised concerns also with respect to this china says why you are interfering in our internal affair but i wonder when it is with respect to india in arunachal pradesh issue when someone or of our union minister or prime minister visit or if dalai lama visit india also why china is that much worried so it is also an internal affair of india right so why does china doesn't stick to its stand is the question which is never answered by china right so the same way here india also is adhering to this one china policy only so why this uh, tensions are there because china is always it is troubling india so we don't want to enter into in the internal affairs if we support taiwan's independence or something then it also will it will also fuel the separatist attitudes in northeast or it will uh, um, it will fund or it will even help the northeast insurgent groups or even in kashmir also it will fuel these things that is why india doesn't want to enter into these aspects and it is supporting this one china China policy and do remember India doesn't have any official diplomatic relations with Taiwan so there is no official diplomatic relations between India and Taiwan so we have only one association India Taipei association where this is association which is there for diplomatic relations okay so there are some economic ties at the same time some people to people contacts are there but in the uh, as part of this taiwan wants to extend areas of cooperation between india and taiwan because taiwan is interested in spreading its cooperation in south bound policy it has released a policy called south bound policy as part of this south bound policy it wants to increase the presence and areas of cooperation with india because india is what they consider as the best alternative to china in case if they want any help that can be given by china, india so that is why as part of the southbound policy they are giving most important to 
extend the relations with India. This is what you have to keep in mind. Now, let's see the practice question given yesterday. With reference to FATF grey list, consider the following statements. These are the countries that have in the assessment of FATF failed to prevent international money laundering and also terrorist financing as the question has given gray list okay so they have given the statement is correct if they have failed to assess okay then it is the right statement then at present pakistan has been remained in fatf gray list for the fifth consecutive year it has been in the gray list but now it was lifted out of the gray list so this option is incorrect as i have asked correct options only one is the correct option second option is incorrect then you can see the practice question given for today which of the following earthquake waves is the first recorded on the seismograph? Seismograph is an instrument to measure earthquakes. Okay, so which of the waves among these will be hitting the seismograph first? So answer in the comment section. Then what is the main question? Highlight the earthquake distribution in the world. Discuss the vulnerability of India earth, earthquake hazards. Okay, so in, in this case, you have to remember another important thing is in case of any tsunami alert issued in the Indian Ocean region, what is a nodal agency from India? Try to answer in the comment section. It is, I am giving the answer, it is INCOIS. INCOIS is headquartered in which particular city? Answer in the comment section. And in the recent times, under UNESCO, Indian Ocean Regions Resilient Initiative, one of the particular Indian city was Indian, you can say Indian place or town you can say that was recognized as tsunami ready this happened for the first time entire indian ocean one particular place from india and i'm giving the state also in odisha okay the place is in odisha so it was recognized as tsunami ready initiative so what is that place try to answer in the comment section this was the first to be recognized from india so such things are very important from examination perspective so as we have reached the end of the video today we have discussed about what happened in taiwan what is the earthquake and what we have seen is what is that tsunami and what factors drive the tsunami at the same time we also have seen the historical background of china and taiwan relations at the same time what is India stand on Taiwan. So these are the things which we have discussed as part of this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.